welcome as we gather for worship on this Pentecost Sunday here at Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church. I'm sure that there will be people straggling in as they finish setting up uh, for our luncheon afterward. I hope everyone will stay as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. And uh, Pentecost is often known as the birthday of the church, so the tables are all themed with different months, and um, it should be a fun time of worship today and a time of fellowship after worship. So as folks finish setting up and we turn our hearts to God in worship today, I invite you to join me in just sort of a moment of a deep breath. And whatever the morning has been, Center yourself and focus your heart on God this morning as we worship. As we begin to worship today, let us stand in body or spirit and lift our voices together as we sing our opening hymn. Number 539 in the blue United Methodist hymnal. 539. We got all Holy Spirit songs today. O Spirit of the Living God. So let's stand as we're able and sing. continue to lift our voices together in prayer with the um, prayer that is in our order of worship, our bulletin. Holy God, you spoke the world into being. Pour your spirit to the ends of the earth that your children may return from exile as citizens of your commonwealth and our divisions may be healed by your word of love and righteousness. Amen. Please be seated.
Good morning. Our first passage today is from Numbers chapter 11, verses 24 through 30. That's found on page 129 of your pew Bible, if you'd like to follow along. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out of the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of the, his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Our second passage today is Acts 2, verses 1 through 21, and that is from the Message Translation. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the, same, when they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard, one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were blown away. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on, and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked, they're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy and also your daughters. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous, and whoever calls out for help to me, God, will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. As we prepare to hear a dramatic reading about the day of Pentecost, I invite us all to just stay where we are and stay seated as we sing hymn 334, Sweet, Sweet Spirit, hymn 334. sweet 
The fire. The wind. The water. The liberation of God's people began with the burning of a flame. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. Moses led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. Is not my word like fire and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The liberation of God's people continued with fire. And with wind. On the morning of the third day, after the Israelites had entered the desert of Sinai, there was thunder and lightning as well as a thick cloud on the mountain. And a blast of a trumpet so loud that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. They took their stand at the foot of the mountain. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. The smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln while the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses would speak and God would answer him in thunder. God's people remembered their liberation out of Egypt in the celebration of three festivals. Passover, or the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Shavuot, or Pentecost. And the Feast of Tabernacles. For God had said, Three times in the year you will hold a festival for me. You shall observe the feast of Passover, which makes the first spring harvest. You shall observe Pentecost, the Thanksgiving festival of the harvest of wheat. And remember the giving of the law. You shall observe the feast of the tabernacles at the end of the harvest. When you gather in from the field the fruit of your labor, these are the three times in a year when all your males shall appear before the Lord God. The fire, the wind, the water. The book of the Acts of the Apostles opens with these words. After his suffering, Jesus presented himself alive to the apostles by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking of the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. To stay in the city until they have been clothed with power from on high. This is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, while it blazed with fire to the heavens with black clouds and deep darkness. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind. He makes winds his messengers flames of fire his servants and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and anything else that can withstand fire must be put through the fire and then it will be clean but it must also be purified with the water of cleansing divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The fire. The wind. The water. And the events of Passover 
were like a reversal of the events of the Tower of Babel. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. Now the whole <laughs> earth had one language and the same words, and as they migrated from the east, they came upon the plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. And they said to one another, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Germans, Swedes, Palestinians, and residents of Moscow, Geneva, and Beijing, Pretoria and Cairo, France and Indonesia, Egypt and Libya. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. The fire. The wind, the water. This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit. Those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. And they shall prophesy, and I will show signs in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by you, by God, with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did something through him among you, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. And I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So that when they look on the one whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. On that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and in the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. This Jesus God raised up and of that all of us are witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, 
He has poured out this that you both see and hear. And I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The fire, the wind, the water. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Each man will be like a shelter from the wind and a refuge from the storm. Like streams of water in the desert and the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. As we continue to ponder in our hearts what God has been saying to us today, and as we prepare ourselves for prayer, I invite us to stand and sing in the Black Faith We Sing hymnal number 2193, Lord, listen to your children praying. Stand as you're able. again. You ready? Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. 
we go to God in prayer, I invite you to be seated or come and kneel. And as we um, pray and lift the names of those people, places, and situations, we respond with, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we sang and we ask, listen to your children praying. God, hear us today as we pray. Hear us today as we lift our hearts and our voices to you. Hear us today, God, as we ask for you to come and be present in the world in a new way, present in our lives in a new way, present in the lives of those we love in a new way. And God, as on the day of Pentecost, we are gathered together praying and soon we'll be breaking bread. And so we ask, God, that you send your Holy Spirit to dwell among us. Pour your Spirit out upon us so that we may be your people with courage and boldness in the world. Not so that we may be something great, but God, so you may be known as someone great. And God, as we sense the, the drawing of your spirit, the leading of your spirit, the gentle prompting or the loud sound of the rushing of the wind of your spirit, God, give us courage to listen. Give us courage to follow. Give us courage to obey where you tell us to go. So, Lord... Hear us. Hear us as we lift to you our questions, our concerns, our ponderings, our doubts, the places where we need you, God, the people that we lift to you and entrust to you, the situations that we don't know what to do, but you do, God. Hear us as we lift those now to you. Lord, in your mercy. 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 And for all the things that are too heavy to rise to our lips, Lord, in your mercy. We trust that you have heard your children praying, and we trust that you hear us as we share together in the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we continue to uh, listen for God's direction and wait for the blowing of the Holy Spirit, there are steps that we can take um, to walk in our faith journey, to be disciples and make disciples. 
And so a few things that are available to you is um, in the back is the upper room for May and June, if you haven't picked that up yet. We also have the book cart and the books that are across the hall in the Rose Room. If you need some summer reading, there's plenty of options for you. Uh, so we encourage you to take those books and give them away to somebody else when you're done. Uh, also, as I plan for fall worship and preaching, there is an opportunity to give some input on what that could look like. And if you looked in your Friday e-news email letter, there's a link to a survey in that. If you can take it online, that is much easier. But if you are not able to do that, there are some printed copies in the back um, on the table with the bulletins, so you can grab one of those and return it to Holly Wagner. If you have questions, you can ask her about that. We are looking for some folks to be part of our usher team, so that's uh, an opportunity. And as the choir sings today, uh, we are reminded that there's lots of room left in that choir loft. And so we invite anyone to come and join at 9 a.m. Uh, as the choir rehearses almost every Sunday, most Sundays. Next week, as we gather for worship, we will celebrate Holy Communion. We will honor two college graduates that we have. And then after worship next Sunday, we have our One Rooms Sunday School in the Fellowship Hall for all ages of people. Uh, we'll be learning about the Trinity next Sunday. So as we continue to worship today as an act of worship and an act of discipleship, we give our tithes and offerings this morning. Uh, ushers, as you come, the choir will be singing, and then at the end of the song, we have an opportunity to stand and sing with them the doxology and the chorus of the song. So ushers. The song we're singing today is called 10,000 Reasons, which is probably familiar to many of you. We invite you to sing along with us. And as Pastor Chris said, we'll be singing the doxology towards the end, followed by the final chorus. Please join us.
Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for the gifts that you have poured out upon us, for the gifts of the spirit, for the gifts of work, for the gifts of music, and the gifts of service. God, we give you thanks for all of it. And as we return these gifts to you today, God, we ask that you receive them as an act of worship. Out of obedience and out of love, God, we give back to you. Receive these gifts and bless them, not so that we may be somehow great in the world, God, but bless the gifts so that you are known as great in the world. Give us wisdom and courage of the Spirit to be your disciples, making disciples for the transformation of the world. God, we ask this in the name of Jesus, the one who is and was and forevermore shall be. Amen. Amen. As we uh, continue in worship in song, we'll sing together from the Black Faith We Sing hymnal, number 2241. 2241, the Spirit sends us forth to serve. Let us lift our voices together. first verse one more time. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. We go in Jesus' name to bring glad tidings to the poor. God's favor to When we go forth from this place, it is not just to go with warm hearts and people who feel good because we've been to church for the week. When we go from this place, it is the Holy Spirit that sends us forth to serve in our communities, to go in the name of Jesus, to bring glad tidings to the poor, the literal poor, the poor in spirit, and to proclaim God's favor. So as we go from this place, go empowered by the Holy Spirit. And whether we're going out these doors and into the fellowship hall and sitting at a table for a meal, or whether we're going out those doors and going into the rest of our day, we go in the power of the Spirit. We hope everyone will join us as we eat. Remember to find the table that is your birthday month and sit with some new folks. Uh, some of the tables have a couple of months at them, so if you need some help, ask somebody, see if you figure it out, and we'll, we'll work it around, all right? So we'll go find our birthday month table, have a seat, and then there'll be some more instructions And when we get in there. Let's go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as all God's people say, Amen. Amen.